All right, what's going on, everybody? So this is my top 10 most anticipated games for 2019. Now, keep in mind, you know, this is subject to change because there are several games that most likely will come out in 2019, but they don't have an actual release date yet. So, you know, more announcements are going to happen. Also, pretty much all the games on my list except one are pretty much confirmed to come out in 2019 or very likely to come out in 2019. So if you don't see a game on my list that you expected me to have, it's either the game might have just not made the top 10 even though I am looking forward to it, or I'm actually not looking forward to the game at all, or there is the small chance that I might have forgotten a few titles uh, when I'm considering uh, you know, my top 10, or, you know, the game is probably just not coming out in 2019. But anyway, let's get to the list. So coming in at number 10, I have Control. Yeah, Control made by Remedy Entertainment, which is pretty much just Quantic Break 2, because I like Quantic Break. I like the gameplay. I thought the game had a lot of potential that wasn't exactly reached and I don't think a lot of things in the game were executed well the game just felt underdeveloped and when I seen Control I believe it premiered at E3 I, I became very excited because I feel like this is just a a vastly I, I think it's going to be a vastly improved Quantic Break because I think Remedy is going to take everything they learned uh, from making that game and everything they did wrong and everything they did well and that's going to turn this project into a much better game. I mean, that kind of sucks for Microsoft because they got kind of got the raw end of the deal. Uh, you know, Quantic Break is essentially just like an experiment or like an early draft project prototype. And I feel like Control is going to be, you know, the, the final draft or just the better version of the game. So yeah, I just really like the gameplay of Control. It looks like it's, it's gonna be uh, a decent story. Um, interesting plot. So yeah, number, uh, control is number 10. Number nine is Code Vein. So everybody knows I love my Souls games. Um, this game had, they've been silent, uh, on this project for a while since it was delayed. It was supposed to come out like the end of this year, but it got delayed into 2019. And since then we didn't hear anything about it at all, which I'm not worried about because that to me, that just means, you know, they've gone on radio silence to put all their effort into developing the game because it did seem rough around the edges a little bit but everybody knows i love my souls uh type games you know it has looks like it has some different uh decent rpg elements um it has some good visuals y'all know i love me a challenge i'm a masochist and everything like that uh, i think the you know the the presentation needed to be cleaned up a, a little bit, which I'm sure uh, they're doing. This is a game I, you know, most of these games I would say on, on my list, I would say most of them are, mo are multi-plats and, you know, most of them I will be buying on PC. And even the early versions of this game uh, did seem to be running pretty well. Uh, and this seems to be, you know, because there's so many Souls games out there, you can't make your game a clone. So they seem to be adding their, their own type of like uh, flavor or you know, gay, uh, differentiation uh, in gameplay design to make it stand out and make it a little bit different from the rest of the games in this genre. So yeah, uh, I look forward to Code Vein. Code Vein is number nine. So number eight is Neo 2. And I went back and forth with, with my decision for even putting Neo 2 on my list at all, on, only because I played so much of Neo that I got burnt out of it. I, put, I beat the game, of course, but I think I put like 85 hours in Neo because I did like all the side quests I did all the unnecessary things in that game that I became so burnt out and even though I looked forward to Neo 2 the thought of playing that game still like feels like like a chore in my mind because I burnt myself out of you know by doing all the unnecessary things um, in in Neo, and I didn't pace myself myself well. But when I really thought about it, no, I'm definitely excited for this game. Another Souls type game, but played a little bit more like a hack and slash because it had you know all these different combos and, and variations with the weapons, and it made sense that the game played 
like you know almost like a, like a fighter or or a hack and slash with all these different moves and uh you know combos because it was made you know by team ninja so of course all of that made sense so yeah uh i'm definitely looking forward to to neo too i think it, it was a you know neo was originally a playstation um exclusive it, it came to xbox and pc i think this one is just coming to all platforms initially so i'll be buying um, you know it on PC if it's if it's on PC at launch because even though uh, I enjoyed it on PlayStation 4 you know they had the different modes the, the visual mode and the performance mode and I think the visual mode ran at like 720p if I remember right it was it was pretty low I can't remember exactly what it is but I'm like yeah I want I'm, I'm gonna play this uh, on PC so I can get the highest settings possible so yeah Neo is going to Neo is number eight for me. Number seven is Gears Five. So I really enjoyed Gears Four. I had a lot of fun with it. And as far as like this, the campaign and the story goes, I want to see if they can up the ante a little bit because I think that's what Microsoft needs is you know for one of their games to prove that they can have a really engrossing story, a really you know memorable single player experience. Because you know Gears Four single player wasn't bad but it wasn't anything great anything to write home about and you know i think this single player does need to impress and i want to see if they can like i said up the ante a little bit um go a little bit deeper in terms of the story uh you know with this uh second trilogy of the gears franchise i want to see who they can take it um you know we were playing um as uh jd and in four and now we're playing as kate and it makes sense if you play if you played four and beat the story you know it makes sense story wise for you to play as as her in five and i don't feel like they fleshed out the new characters enough in four and okay you know may that may be a little bit difficult to do in one game um but i hope they do a lot more of that in five we need to know a lot more about these characters they gotta you know tell a a better narrative um, and, and build the lore a, a little bit more in, in, in this game, um, in, in the world of these new protagonists. And I had a lot of fun with the multiplayer. I, I'm honestly looking more, uh, looking forward more to f of the multiplayer because that's a game where we had a lot of fun in, in this community with, you know, with all the people I, you know, play multiplayer games with, you know, in Discord and everything like that. And there's been a severe lack of multiplayer games this generation that I've liked at least, and you know, that I've had fun with. So Gears is honestly probably is one of the few multiplayer games um, on my list. I think it, I think there's only like three multiplayer games on my list. So, you know, it's slim pickings this generation in comparison to the last generation as far as, you know, multi great multiplayer experiences. So Gears is number seven. Number six is Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. So initially when Sekiro was um, first revealed, I wasn't impressed with it because I'm like, I don't feel like they showed enough. Everybody was blown. Yeah, we know it's from software is making it. And, you know, I, I trust them as a developer and everything like that because, you know, they make a lot of the games that, that I like. Um, but I just didn't feel like enough was shown. And it was like this really quick uh, sizzle reel with a lot of cuts in it. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't really get to see enough gameplay. But once we saw some actual people playing the game and it wasn't all these cuts i was like okay this looks good it's gonna have the difficulty it's gonna have you know the great bosses and the great boss design the great level design uh visuals look good uh we know from software is, is trying to depart from the you know the souls styling of you know what we're uh used to a little bit they wanted to you know get away from that a little bit they were tired of making the same thing so you know Sekiro look, looks looks really fun so I'm definitely looking forward to it so it's uh number six number five is Rage 2 now uh listen let me tell you something I think Rage 2 is is gonna blow a lot of people's minds I think a lot of people are gonna be uh surprised at how amazing and how praised i think this game is going to be because i'm one of the people who always said rage the the original rage wasn't a terrible game i just think that game got a bad rap was it amazing no uh there was a lot of faults in it but i think i i always felt like this game had great potential and there was no reason i saw no reason a game like rage should not get a sequel i think any game any original game that shows you it did several things well I think it only makes sense for you to get give that game a sequel because then you know it's clear it's it's very clear what they did wrong. So if they get a chance to make a sequel, they can correct all those things, which is what 
most games do. Most of the time, the best uh, the best installment in a franchise is usually the second game. You know, because the first one, you know, it's it's you can look at it as like a prototype. You know, you put it out there. The consumer tells you what they like, what you didn't like. You make those improvements. And then the, the second game usually ends up being perfect. And then the third game, they change too much and F, F everything up. So I don't know, you know, why people were, you know, or saying it. Nobody was asking for this. I mean, listen, I was asking for it. I think Rage 2, the, the gameplay speaks for itself. I think it looks awesome. Um, and, you know, I don't praise just any first-person shooter. Everybody knows that. I, I heavily prefer third-person games in general, third-person shooters. But I just love how smooth it looks. Um, it looks fun, crazy. Uh, you know, they've definitely expanded, um, you know, the universe in, in Rage. And, yeah, I, I just really look forward to it. Um, made by Av Avalanche Games, so, you know, they're putting their little wackiness to it, which I think it needs. It needs a little lighter touch than the darker tone that was in one. It needs to be a little bit more fun. So, yeah, Rage 2 is number five. Number four is Anthem. So, uh, number four is Anthem not because, well, I got to play, I got to play the, the, the Alpha, which, of course, I can't necessarily speak on any deep details, but this isn't just wishful th thinking and you know hoping that the game is good i played it okay so it it probably wouldn't be at number four if i didn't play it if if i didn't play it it would have probably been like somewhere like maybe number eight but i'm deaf i like what i played it's a i think it's a lot of fun i i think ea is going to be receptive to a lot of criticism and what people want from this game i think this is a game they're going to support for many years I don't think this, I played it, like I said, I don't think it's anything like Destiny. I mean, yeah, I don't think it's anything like Destiny. Destiny. I think people are uh, making that wrong comparison. I understand the comparison, but I, I think they're trying to do with Anthem the same thing that Activision did with Destiny. But as far as gameplay goes, no, this game is not anything like Destiny. The, it, it just feels so smooth. The animations, the way the game plays, it's, it's responsive. And listen... I know a lot of people were, you know, the things we saw at E3, we were like, oh, it's vertical cuts. The game is not going to look like that. It's not going to move like that. Mm. It looks like that and it moves like that. I, I could tell you that right now. Unless they've, you know, even in that, unless they've tricked us in the alpha and the final version doesn't look, uh, look like that or play like that, which is entirely possible, but unlikely. I, I have all faith in this game, you know, like I said. I enjoy it. I think it's fun. It's going to be, you know, it's going to focus on co-op experiences, even though I'm not the biggest fan of co-op. And I'm a little disappointed it's it's not going to have um, PvP, but hopefully they add that in, in the future. Hopefully they add that in the future. So Anthem is number four. Number three is Resident Evil 2. I mean, I don't, if, if you're not buying Resident Evil 2 in January, I don't know what you're doing. Um, the game looks amazing. This is a true, true remake um, through and through. You know, Capcom, Capcom doing a thing. There was there was a time where Capcom was se seemingly in trouble financially, and they weren't putting out the games that uh, you know the consumers wanted, and they they weren't in the best um, you know the best graces. But now, even though typically they, they, so they're, they're they're balanced right now, they're creating new experiences while re remaking a lot of their old experiences so i'm not mad at them for that people are buying it people want it they you know they're not half assing their remakes or or their projects uh you know they're really rebuilding them from from the ground up so i respect it and i'm a huge resident evil fan resident evil 2 looks great so i mean there's really you don't really have to explain why resident evil you know three resident evil 2 is number three i mean they're probably already working on resident evil 3 remake and you know rumors are um uh even dino crisis and we know we're gonna get an uh a, a new onimusha so yeah um but yeah resident evil 2 looks just visually beautiful gameplay looks fun uh you know that's that's, that's a classic game you know it's, it's a favorite by most people so yeah uh, Resident Evil 2 is number three. Number two is Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Everybody knows how big of a fan I am of Crash Team Racing. I have been calling for this remake 
forever, for years. It's, to me, the greatest kart racer ever made. The only thing I'll, I will, like, you know, debate you with is Diddy Kong Racing, right? And it's... Because Crash Team Racing is really just Diddy Kong Racing with, with PlayStation characters. And Diddy Kong Racing is, c c you know, you could argue is the best kart racer ever. So I'm not mad at that. So, but they, but they did it right. And you know, I just I just love the game. I love the the driving mechanics, the um, you know the the tracks, the adventure mode was just so good. Uh, the the uh, you know the drifting, um, the characters. I just I just love everything about that game. I, I must a hundred percent of that game so many times when I was a kid. So, uh, and I can't I can't wait to play people online. I think that's the thing I'm looking forward to most. I just hope it feels like how it did all those years ago. So Crash Team Racing is number two. Number one is The Last of Us 2. And I know the speculation of if this game is even coming out next year, I'm gonna go ahead and, and go ahead and believe, you know, put positivity up in the, un in the universe and the atmosphere and believe this game is coming out 2019. I believe if, if Naughty Dog grinds it out, they can get this game out by September. I, 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 that studio is huge. They have all the resources, all the personnel. They can get anything from Sony they need. So if they need to go on like a real hiring spree real, real quick to meet the deadline for this game, even though Sony's not going to rush them, I'm sure they're not going to put out a product on, unless it's, it, it's ready. I think they can do it. I think this game can absolutely come out in 2019. If it's not, then it comes out spring 2000, 2020. But I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna believe for right now it's gonna come out um, uh, this year. But I'm, I'm still like shaky about that because you know I, I still feel like we haven't gotten enough gameplay. Uh, if we don't get like a good amount of gameplay halfway through two, through 2019, it's definitely not coming out this year because you know they, they have they we still haven't really seen much infected gameplay. We still haven't seen the multiplayer. You know all these things need to be finished well ahead of time. They probably, honestly, well, they they don't need to put out a beta for the multiplayer. They didn't last time, but might be a good idea. But yeah, that gameplay we saw at E3, where we finally saw some real gameplay with Ellie and just how advanced this game looks. Yeah. Uh, and even though I criticize the original Last of Us, I, I always say Last of Us is, to me... Last of Us is not a masterpiece. I always said this game lacks things that I that I believe when the sequel comes out, they will improve on and the sequel will be a masterpiece. That's what I always said. I, every time I, I beat Last of, Us, Last of Us, I'm like, this game is not a masterpiece. But it is absolutely guaranteed that the sequel will be. We know the story is going to be great. You know, La uh, Naughty Dog has amazing writers they have a way of tying things together and you know doing things you don't expect and creating these really great characters and um just memorable characters the gameplay is going to be solid they're doing uh, they pay attention to a lot of detail and they always look how how they can ad advance uh, game design the visuals the game is going to run at 30 frames which is probably going to be the worst thing about it uh resolution i don't know probably above 1440 something uh, in the middle, you know, 18, 8, 1800 checkerboard, something like that. Um, but it's going to visually look stunning. And it's, I don't know of anything. It's probably, listen, I'll even, I'll even go right now to say that Last of Us might win Game of the Year if it comes out 2019. Um, I don't know. I can't think of anything right now that could absolutely compete with last of us for 2019 but it's possible because like i said i'm only i only got a few games in my head right now and um you know more games could be announced so yeah um so yeah, last of us is number one honorable mention i'm gonna give two honorable mentions days gone uh didn't make my list because even though i'm looking forward to it it's still it still doesn't like provoke a lot of excitement for me. It's a day one for me, but Days Gone just di didn't provoke too much excitement for me. Um, and also, Devil May Cry is a is an honorable mention. It it kinda was on my list, but I had to choose between like pretty much games like Sekiro and Neo Two and Code Vein knocked uh, Devil May Cry off off the list pretty much. You know, which is which is understandable and and, and respect respectable. So yeah, those are two honorable mentions. There's 
might be a, a, a few more, but I'm going to keep it at that. So yeah, those are my top 10 most anticipated games for uh, 2019. Let me know y'all list in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit the like button. Uh, make sure you hit the notification bell so you can know any time I, I go live. And uh, yeah, appreciate y'all support watching the video. Make sure you hit the like button, like I said. Follow me on Twitter and uh, let me know what y'all think. I'm out of here. Peace.